Hello YouTube and welcome to Antirots on Gaming. Today I'm taking a look at a browser-based MMO game and this time it's a game called AD2460. There's a title right here in the bottom, on the top, bottom left part of the screen. And this game, unlike other um, browser-based games that I've taken a look at, is actually not free to play. So uh, there is a, um, a free 15-day trial that you can try and if you like this you can obviously si uh, subscribe and start paying for this game. But let's see if that's actually worth the money. It does cost about, it's actually relatively cheap at about 3 euros per month. But still, maybe it's not worth your time or your money. So um, I'm going to take a look at this. Uh, one thing right off the bat is that there's no music. So this is a super quiet game, possibly really good for work. Not so good for when you want to listen to some music. Uh, or basically when you want music playing. Uh, so let's actually discover what this game is like. So it says here, this is a helper. Now, one thing that this game claims to be is that it's not pay to win, meaning that once you pay the subscription fee, there's really nothing you can do to make yourself more powerful, which is actually a good thing, I guess. But nevertheless, it might not be as uh, as good as some of the other free to play games. And my first mission right here is to build a Hasium refinery facility add on. These are the newbie quests that you're given just so that you can learn the game. So let's go ahead and do this. This is actually called first steps. Uh, Oh, there's more first steps missions here. And so this is my facility feature right here. And I believe refineries are on the bottom. Hasium refinery. All right, let's build this. And this is my first quest. Okay. Okay. How long would that take? And oh my God, it is going to take me two hours to build this thing. So that will, I guess we'll have to, I'll have to wait for this to finish. Uh, I can't really build anything else for, um, for that reason. So if I try to click on this, there's an error that shows up here. Facilities must be, must be built one at a time. Okay, so that will probably will take me a while. Uh, research improved gunnery. All right, so let's go ahead and research something. Where is my research screen? I just saw it a few seconds ago. Res research right here. Uh, improved gunnery. So this is the research screen. Let's close this for a second. There's all kinds of different researches you can do here and uh, shield protection, structural integrity, range targeting. All right, so I need to get this going. So let's order that and all right, research initiated. Um, I don't know if it's going to show. Okay, so it's gonna take me half an hour to research this. There's a queue on the bottom that shows me how long it will take me to do things. Uh, I can also do uh, four more things. I can develop something. So there's no development right now, but I can also develop something. I can do something called prospecting, which I guess is looking for resources. I can go do some kind of a alliance project upgrade. I'm not sure what that is. And also I can produce things. So let's do some of those as well. So far, this game looks really relatively simple. Um, basically, it's a bunch of boxes that you control. I would like to actually see if there's a map as well. This is what I've been looking for. But before we go to the map, so we did, we did this, we did this. Let's do development. Can I develop something cool? Let's develop something. I can do basic outpost, uh, scout ship design, and small transport. What is this for? Uh, resource gathering. Yes, I want that. Give me that. All right, in 10 minutes, it'll be ready. Home world and production. What can I produce? I can produce capital ships and I can produce utility ships. Uh, I would like to have a uh, light frigate or pro I can only build uh, this is too expensive for me right now so I can only build a prospector which is what I'm going to be doing right now and this will be done in five minutes and I'll be able to prospect and possibly look for more resources all right so that's uh th these are the basic things here on the main screen there's a star map right here let's actually click on it uh, and see what that looks like and here's my star map so okay top five alliances top five players I'm obviously not here because I am probably the bottom five player right now. Uh, so let's actually click on one of the quadrants. Ooh, okay, what is this? What is happening? Ooh. Okay, so it looks like there's quite a lot of various um, quadrants available to us in a game. So basically, uh, just like any other strategy MMO that's played in a browser game, uh, in a browser, uh, you can basically select various um, various locations on the map. But here it seems like there's a whole, whole layer on top of it. So there's quite a lot of different players, a lot of different locations you can choose. So they've actually tried to create a very large galaxy here, which is pretty nice. That means it means that it's quite a lot of things to explore and find and discover. All right. So what else do we have? Uh, this, what is this? Oh, okay. So that's a forum right here. There's actually a forum uh, on the bottom that you can basically 
um, used to communicate and talk to people. There's an alliance. Where I'm not part of an alliance yet, so that I can't really talk to alliance people. And there's messages that you send and receive from various people. All right, so let's look at the tech tree. And as you can see, the tech tree is relatively complex. There's um, all kinds of... Oh, okay, so there's actually three separate... Um, three separate uh, research trees. There's something called Intech, and this is like it says right here. It specializes in dealing with modifying the physical properties of materials. There's something called Strong Tech, and this is um, the gains you get from harnessing and releasing energy. And there's something called Neotech, manipulation of gravitational and magnetic fields. So okay, so there's three different types, and obviously these will offer you different benefits. So if I click on this, for example, it will decrease all Neotech related research completion. Okay, that's that's kind of useless. Uh, this one increases Neotech weapons damage by 1%. Uh, this one here increases strong tech weapons. So basically, these are three different branches you can pursue. And you, can, you can probably mix them up as well as you please and making your ships use various types of weapons. Okay, so that was, um, I believe this was my homeworld screen. Let's go into the next screen, and oh yeah, and, uh, this is how much uh, units of stuff I produce per hour, and obviously this increases as I build up some of my buildings uh, in my structures in, in my base. And also as I probably discover new prospectors and start mining things. So there's four different um, specific, uh, what you want to call them, resources. One is called Hassium, and then there's Indium, Strontium, and Neodymium, and there's obviously something called Credits. Now this one I'm not sure about, what is this? Okay, so this is actually interesting, and this is how the payment system works in this game. Uh, every day you play this game, it costs you one credit, and if you want to refill your credits, you can basically purchase them by clicking on this, I guess, yeah, or somewhere there. Yeah, here we go, click to purchase credits. Now, uh, I have 15 credits because I've just started playing. As I play every day, this will decrease, obviously, because every day you get charged one credit. So that also means that if you skip a few days, you don't have to pay for the whole month. You basically just pay for the days that you play, which is actually a relatively good system. I actually do like this uh, a lot more than... I didn't realize it was going to be this way. Now, this is definitely not a monthly subscription. This is a subscription of you basically paying per, per day of gameplay, which is interesting. It actually makes it a little bit... Um, more dynamic and a little bit better for people that don't want to spend too much money on the game. Now, if you do play browser games, you've probably spent money uh, just to compete with other people. And here, it's not required because as you, if you just pay this fixed amount, you wouldn't have to really pay anything else, which is actually possibly a good way of making money for the company and also for players to enjoy uh, competitive gameplay without really spending too much money on various things. All right, so let's click on Outposts. Uh, outposts, I have, I believe, nothing because I haven't built anything yet. No Outposts selected. All right, so um, that's, that's I, I believe this is basically the basis that you build around your, uh, your uh, main station and this will give you extra resources. Kind of similar to games like, um, I guess in Travians, you could actually use Outposts as well where you collect various resources. Um, alliance, I don't have any yet. I don't have any friends or enemies, which is good or bad. I don't know. Depends on how you see things. Military. All right. Um, this is where you manage your fleet. I currently do not have a fleet because I only have one ship. Or actually, no, I do have a fleet. Let's actually look at it. Oh, interesting. So, yes, I do have a fleet and I can possibly even launch this somewhere. Can I launch it somewhere? Oh, I don't have any locations scouted out. So you can obviously use the fleet uh, to fight other players and also possibly fight uh, random locations that have um, AI players or uh, sorry, AI bases that you can uh, then take over and get the resources from. But unfortunately, I don't have any ships yet to uh, or locations scouted yet to actually to, to benefit from this. But basically, this is how the military works. It's relatively simple. Uh, you also have a component here called intelligence, which is basically how you spy on various players using your um, your spy missions. And uh, there is something called target search, which means that I can actually search for a nearby location. Okay, I couldn't find anyone um, next to me. It's probably because I'm not particularly powerful yet, but maybe I can find someone a little bit farther away. Okay, so I think because I'm still kind of an early player, I don't really, um, I can't really use this yet because I'm not particularly powerful. But this is a way for you to find possible targets to attack and to um, basically steal resources from. 
Uh, we also have something called missions, and uh, one of my first missions here is is to find a missing frigate. So there's a bunch of missions here, a bunch of quests, I guess you could call them, that follow a storyline. And this one here is find a missing frigate that you basically lost somewhere. Um, I can prepare a mission and I can basically select um, special settings here. So there's a normal search, there's a broad search, or a focus search. Uh, this mission will take me five minutes to complete and will give me 10 experience points. And I need to have one scout to, to do this mission. Let's do it. Oh yes, of course I don't have any scouts yet because I'm still producing it. Is it? Is it almost done? All right, so unfortunately I actually haven't developed the scouts yet and it will take me 15 minutes to develop that particular uh, spaceship and then also more time to actually build one. So it will be at least half an hour before I even have a capacity to start this mission. So yes, this game is definitely um, not particularly interactive. There's quite a lot of waiting, there's quite a lot of... Um, well, I wouldn't say it's not visually pleasing, but basically quite a lot of reading. It's not really a, a game I would I would call a game. It's more of a um, it's more of a, a box simulator. Basically, there's a bunch of boxes, a bunch of text where you click on various boxes and you click on more boxes just to get things going. Now, there's obviously quite a lot of games that are browser based that are a lot more interactive and do make you feel like you actually played in this particular universe. Unfortunately for AD 2460, I don't feel that. I don't feel like I'm actually playing in this massive universe with other people. One of the reasons is because, well, there's really no music here. It doesn't really make me feel like I'm I'm in here. Like, in, where is that map? Let me, sh let me see that map. I don't feel like I am in that star map. Like, this really means nothing to me right now because, not just because of the music, but because it's all kind of, it's kind of just a bunch of boxes. Now, that might be not a bad thing for some people that like to have simplicity and slightly uh, less visual design, but more uh, more complexity. This might be actually a good game, but for me personally, I'm not sure if I'm enjoying this so far. Yes, it does have quite a lot of people. There's quite a lot of locations. There's quite a lot of things you can do, research and fight and so on and so forth. But it's more of a text simulator than it is a video game. Uh, definitely not a very exciting browser-based game, and, uh, at least for me personally. Now, overall, definitely uh, a good attempt at making something interesting and, and novel and um, unique, especially the payment method. But I think I am going to possibly skip this one in terms of starting to play this full-time because it's just not my cup of tea. Now, you may disagree and you are more than welcome to leave a comment saying that maybe I missed something, maybe there's something that I have not seen here, but right now, it just it's not particularly exciting. This is not a, one of the more exciting games I've played, and definitely not a, one of the better um, browser games I've played, but it's not terrible either. I definitely recommend you give it a try, especially because it does have um, 15 day free trial. Anyway, this has been NTRX on with AD 2460. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and game you later, alligators. Bye bye.